singer, guitarist, harmonic player, writer, and uh, uh, she's, you know, she's. In, I, I thought of her like Prince does with his revolution. That's where I got my idea that they are artists in their own right, but they um, collaborate with him on his material, and hope, hopefully, it mutually benefits both people. From day one, actually, he's always been really encouraging, really listens closely to what I do. He's very hypercritical, though, he's a Virgo, and uh, that's been a little difficult to deal with at times. But uh, no, I mean, I've been very grateful for uh, his comments because when they've been, um, they're always positive. So even if he just rips to shreds what, you, what you're doing, he always sort of points you in a positive direction. So he's given me the, um, this uh, really uh, fantastic thing of being a sounding board for what I, what I was doing. Yeah, I listened to what, what he thought. But um, ultimately, I, I'm very stubborn and I, I've always, you know, I always follow my own instincts in the end. So some things I've done he hasn't liked and some things I, I will do he won't like. Is it one of the rules at all that you've laid down, though, never to actually argue over music? It's the only thing we do argue over. We just argue row like hell over music. But luckily we don't argue about anything else. We just have to go into separate rooms and calm down when there's a difference of opinion. <laughs> Siobhan. Hi. Welcome to Star Test, the computer interview. Please just relax and enjoy yourself. I'll try. <laughs> um, essentially, I'm the lead singer with Shakespeare's sister. That's as succinct as I can be at this stage. Here are nine categories of questions. Please select a category by simply touching the screen. Before and after. Please choose any number. Number two. What would you like to have been if you'd had a different career? A painter. Number eleven. Did you ever run away from home? A couple of times, yeah. Actually, I was running away all the time, but I never ever got very far. I'd sort of get down the road and get confused as to where I was going. And so I always ended up going home when I got hungry or ran out of money, <laughs> which wasn't, didn't take me very long. Um, number 13. If you could meet yourself as a 16-year-old, what advice would you give yourself? I'd say, don't worry, it's going to be all right. <laughs> um, that's about all I could tell, tell myself. Number nine. What was the last note you wrote in your diary? I don't actually keep a diary. I used to keep them frantically when I was in my teen years, when, no when nothing was really happening to me. And when my life got interesting, I, I never really found time to keep a diary, so... I suppose the last entry I ever made in the diary was probably something like, I had to write an essay on Richard II, or something equally riveting. Next, number one. Where do you see yourself in ten years from now? Uh, I 
actually don't think deeply about the future because I'm too busy living in the present and enjoying myself and I just expect to be enjoying myself equally in 10 years time I don't know what I'll be doing but hopefully I'll be having a good time number eight were you a bully at school well there are different opinions on that <laughs> I mean I think I stood up for myself um, next <laughs> number three how much of a kid are you um, well, I try to stay as childlike as possible. I've always hated any kind of responsibility and uh, shied away from it, so I suppose I'm still a bit of a, a prat. <laughs> now please select a new category. Life and fortune. <laughs> Please choose any number. Number five. What is your vision of heaven? Um, <laughs> well, being a lapsed Catholic, the immediate picture that springs to mind is sort of fluffy clouds and angels and bugles and things, but um, I don't know, heaven is what you make it. Number seven. Have you ever been to a fortune teller? I absolutely love going to fortune tellers, uh, but I haven't been for about two years. I always seem to go when I'm really confused, and they kind of tell you things that you think are incredibly accurate at the time, and then you forget what they said about a week later. I must go again soon. Um, number three. Do you believe in ghosts? Yeah, I, I really believe in ghosts. I always have done, and um, I'm terrified of seeing one. But apparently I saw one when I was a baby. I used to tell my mum about an old lady who used to come and visit me in my cot and play. And she was the previous occupant of the, the flat we were living in at the time. She died in the flat. A bit morbid. But, uh... Yes, I do believe in them. Number two. What was the greatest risk you've ever taken? I suppose the greatest risk I've ever taken. I was always taking a lot of sort of physically dangerous risks when I was a child, like playing on rooftops and, and going down dangerous tunnels and things like that. But I don't tend to do things like that anymore unless I'm drunk. <laughs> Number one. Who were you in your last life? Do you know, I'm dying to find out. I'm going to go and do that thing, past life regression. If it, it might make some sense of what I'm doing now. Uh, number six. How optimistic are you about the future of the world? Uh, I'm not too optimistic about the future of the world, actually. I, I get kind of worried about that. But... Uh, I don't know, you've got to start doing things about it. I think if, if people lobbied governments and governments passed more stringent environmental laws, we'd have more of a hope. Fifteen. Name three great things about being you. <laughs> um... Three great things about me. Three stops over, three quarters on, <laughs> and shop from above. What was the first record you bought? It was Ain't No Sunshine by Michael Jackson. Who is your favourite painter? My favourite painter is Leonardo da Vinci. Who is your favourite singer? Edith Piaf. What car do you drive? It's a BMW convertible. Who is your favourite designer? John Galliano. Which is your favourite club? I haven't got one. Would you rather drink a tequila slammer or a gin fizz? A lager and blackcurrant, thank you.
Which is your favorite city? London. Which is your favorite sport? Tennis. Where did you last go on holiday? Thailand. Do you prefer pineapple or mango? Definitely pineapple. When did you last have a haircut? About a year ago. Do you like bubble gum? Very much. Who is your favorite director? David Lynch. Oh, please select a new category. Um, Power and Glory. Oh. Please choose any number. Number three. Who are your heroes? My heroes? Patty Smith. Um, Edith Pierre. Uh, Morrissey, 16. Did you win any prizes at school? Um, yeah, I, I was always sports girl of the year. <laughs> but uh, that's about it, really. Number 11. How far do you need to be successful? Um, I think the main thing is if I feel pleased with what I've done. Um, the rest is just a bonus, really, if you're successful in the eyes of other people. Number nine. How nervous do you get before a performance? Well, it's really strange because before a performance, I kind of block it out of my mind that it's going to happen. And I'm really calm. And then when I'm on stage, the moment I hit the stage and I see the audience, my legs turn to jelly and I, <laughs> and I feel faintly sick and forget my lines. Number one. What do you most dislike about being famous? What do I most dislike? I don't really like uh, what the gutter press write about you and you've got no defense against it. But it's just one of those things. Number 15. Are you a bad loser? Are you a bad loser? I hate losing. <laughs> Should I try and take it on the chin? Here are nine categories of questions. Please select a category by simply touching the screen. Honor and justice. <laughs> Please choose any number. Number 12. How much interest do you take in world events? I'm totally fascinated by world events and uh, I try and keep up with them via TV news. It's kind of difficult when you travel around a lot though. Number eight. How severely do you judge yourself? Probably too severely. I, 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 th I think people waste too much time judging themselves. I'm trying to wean myself off that rather nasty habit. Number five. Which laws would you choose to change? Uh, I'd prevent the introduction of poll tax. I'd reinstate the Fair Rent Act. Um, there's probably loads of others, but I can't think of them at the moment. Number 15. How easy do you find it to admit to mistakes? I'm sorry, I find that really difficult. <laughs> um, yes, I, I can't stand being criticised. I always have a row about it, knowing I'm in the wrong. Number 10. How good a liar are you? Absolutely awful at lying. I never even attempt it because it's just so transparent. Now please select a new category. Mm. Inside and out. Sounds ominous. Please choose any number. Number nine. Which animal best describes your personality? <laughs> uh, well, apparently I was born in the Chinese year of the dog, which has always worried me a bit. 
Number one. Is there a recurring dream you have? Uh, not anymore, no. I dreamt I was possessed the other night. Which, which hopefully won't recur again. Uh, number 14. What are your irritating habits? Um, I'm very indecisive. Um, I refuse to take responsibility for anything. <laughs> Um, I think they're the most irritating things I'd, about me. Number three. How does stress affect you? I usually become insomniac when I'm stressed out, which um, makes it worse, really. Um, Number eight. When do you get your best ideas? Unfortunately, I usually get them about two or three in the morning. Unless I'm going through an insomniac phase, my best ideas aren't committed to paper. Um, number ten. When did you last lose your temper? The last time I lost my temper was a few days ago when the dog knocked over Sam my son. Uh, number 13. What do you most fear? Death. Ta -da. Number five. How far is the public you, the real you? Well, I try and be exactly the same in public as I am in private, but the public me the same as the public anybody else is often a, a fabrication of the media so uh, I'm not really sure, sure what the public perception of me is at this stage <laughs> so I don't tend to read what they write about me much number 15 how many tattoos do you have I haven't got any real ones I'm afraid too scared of the needle Please concentrate hard on answering the questions in this section truthfully. If you appear not to be telling the whole truth, you will forfeit the chance to show your video. From the five questions which follow, you may pass on just two. You didn't tell me about this one. How did Dave Stewart go about proposing? Um... Well, he didn't go down on one knee or anything like that. He didn't pick his moment. It was just, we'd been apart from a, for a month and a half. And um, when we were reunited in the heat of the moment, he said, let's have a baby, let's get married. And in the heat of the moment, I said yes. And then panicked when it started to come true. Next. What secrets can you reveal about Karen Woodward and Sarah Dallin? Oh, God. I won't pass... Uh, oh, I'll have to pass on that one. <laughs> How much resentment was there when you left Banana Rama? There wasn't resentment. There was a, a relief all round, actually, because for a couple of years before I left, I wasn't really moving in the same direction as them, as them musically. And um, I kept sort of arguing about the way things were going and not wanting to do certain things and feeling very frustrated and and they were they knew that I wasn't happy in the band and it, it was a relief to them I think and a relief to me when I eventually left How friendly are you with Annie Lennox? Um, we're f um, fairly friendly uh, but we don't see each other that often, apart from when her and Dave are working. But uh, we get on well. Yeah. Next. You now have 30 seconds to talk about your latest video. My latest video is was a scream to do because my my best friend directed it, Sophie, and. Uh, there's a, a fleeting appearance by my son Sam as a bumblebee 
and I think he looks really funny in it. And it's fabulous, actually. I just love it. <laughs> New category. Uh-oh. Love and passion. Please choose any number. Four. Who do you most love? David Stewart, number nine. How would you describe the perfect relationship? Uh, I suppose it's not being afraid to show any part of yourself to the other person. Um, number ten. Who was your first love? My first love? Oh, yeah, my first love was when I was five, and he was a boy called Simon in my class at school that had the unusual talent of being able to stand on his head without the use of his hands. He just used to balance on the top of his head, which really used to embarrass me in the playground. Number six. Are you a romantic? Yeah, I think I am. Although Dave thinks I'm not. Number 13. What turns you on? <laughs> Mind your own business. Number two. Who was the last man you fantasized about? Not answering that one either. Number eight. What are your passions? What are my passions? Uh, music mainly. Uh, smells. <laughs> I'm very passionate about smells. Um, number 15. How did you feel when you last fell in love? Out of control. <laughs> Thank you for playing Star Test. Thank you for having me. Have you learned anything about yourself? Not really, no. <laughs> it's just, it just um, has reminded me how little I, I understand myself. Who would you like to see in the Star Test chair? Morrissey. You are now invited to select five characteristics from the on-screen menu, which you feel best illustrate your personality. Um... Shy, open, um, naive, paranoid. <laughs> One more to go. Uh, stubborn and creative. She cheated. Goodbye. Bye. Stuart um, of the Eurythmics, who's your mm -hmm. hubby, yes. are you getting much of a much of a chance to uh, to have a look around? Um, well, it's good actually accompanying them on tour because you get to see more than just Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I've just been to the major cities, I'm down to hit an outback mining town or something. <laughs> but I think I'll, I'll have to wait till my next visit. I guess the sixty-four thousand dollar question is why did you leave? the most successful all-girl group in the world. Bananarama sold more records than any other female band. Why did you leave? Well, I couldn't really do... Oh, that's very distracting. <laughs> I couldn't actually uh, um, do, you know, perform the kind of songs I wanted to write within that context. I couldn't use the musical ideas I had stored up 
musical differences. Yes. Is that, is that yeah? That's the official term, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it was a reasonably amical parting, I think. Oh, when, yeah. when I asked them yeah. why you left, they said that you were just kind of going in a different direction That's and right, it was yeah. better that you did leave. I mean, I was in the band for seven years and we were really close friends, so um, when I started feeling like that, they knew about it and we tried to all stick with it and, you know, they knew for a couple of years that I wasn't happy with things. So they were relieved, really. <laughs> so did you leave specifically to do Shakespeare's sister or did that sort of happen as a result of um, twiddling your thumbs? It happened as a result. I mean, if I'd have been thinking about it while I'd been in the band, it would have been like contemplating infidelity or something. Mm. But as soon as I left the band, I just started writing again um, in a way that I hadn't been able to for several years. I just had complete freedom to do what, experiment and do what I wanted to. And, and then shape. Um, Shakespeare's sister had to happen. <laughs> so is Shakespeare's sister you? I, I mean, just you? Or you have a. Well, it started off as just me, but um, I started writing with a friend of mine in LA. And uh, he introduced me to a, an old girlfriend of his called Marcella, Marcella yeah. Detroit, who started. Uh, she started doing backing vocals, and we just got on really well, and she loved what I was doing. And she got more and more involved in the writing, and now she's my par partner. This is you and Marcella and Dave and Ray Cooper and a whole bunch of people in Russia performing yeah. there. How did that come about? I know Dave worked with uh, Boris Grabenchikov, right, the, the yeah. Russian songwriter. And did that lead to you? Yeah, your it did. There? I mean, we became very friendly with Boris when he was over making his records and we did backing vocals on a couple of the tracks. And when him and Dave put a band together to play in um, Leningrad, they invited us to support them. And it mm. seemed like a enjoyable thing to do no we just um it was great because i've been i've really been dying to get on stage and perform with a sort of band for for years mm. and it was everything was completely live and there were like, three guitarists on stage two drummers it was heaven <laughs> you know it was in front of seventeen thousand people which uh was kind of a baptism by fire but how do you great. combine being a mum with a recording artist and a husband touring the world uh, you know, well, it's almost. easy really because I've got a nanny. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. No, um, you just got to be careful that uh, you divide your time equally, you know. Mm. I mean, both things are important to me. But then I wouldn't be a good mother if I was not doing what I'm doing. Mm. Well, we're going to play some Shakespeare's Sister. We've got uh, your history all queued up. So um, let's go. This is Shakespeare's Sister, Siobhan Fay out front. Hey, Siobhan Fay is our special guest. This evening, you're in the country with the Eurythmics. You must see. Do you see the show every night? Um, well, since I've got to Australia, I've seen it most nights, although they're in Canberra tonight. But the, for the first three months of the tour, I wasn't with them at all. Um, it's just, I, I, you know, I, I had prior commitments with mm. Shakespeare's sister, but um, I sort of contrived to do some promotion in Australia, and roughly the same time they were touring, yeah. so I could spend a bit of time. Funny about that. <laughs> we had Annie on the show last week because Dave was crook when he first came to the country. Is he all right now? Well, for the last two days he has been. He's had f five flus in three months. Every Good. time I come and see him, he comes down with another one. Well, it must be difficult <laughs> when you're on the road to keep yourself fit and healthy and all that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the problem is you can't recover. The Eurythmics show is, is just sensational for those people who haven't seen it. Are you still a fan after, after all these years? I am, yeah, but I mean, I've always been a big fan of theirs, but the trouble is now it's... it's a, Obviously, I'm a fan. I'm a bit biased with it. Yeah. <laughs> so. You've got a vested interest. This is great, yeah. this part where Dave gets, um, hits the old chorus button and gets everybody else to yeah. uh, play along. Yeah, it's a killer show. If you haven't seen the Eurythmics uh, in your city yet and you get the chance, go along and see them. We were hoping, there was a word that, that you were going to be doing some shows here, sort of interspersed with Eurythmics concerts, but no. Well, I have a brilliant band, and we were sort of frantically trying to arrange it so that I could do some dates and sort of tiny little clubs <laughs> clubs and, and clubs while yeah. they were doing the mega gigs but uh, there wasn't really enough time to get it together so um, I hope to play here after I do my second album which I start work on at the end of January well good luck with that thanks and thank you for coming in tonight please give our regards to uh, Dave and Annie and um, good luck with Will your do. future stuff and uh, best wishes for the 90s thank Siobhan you Siobhan Fay our special guest on MTV this evening and